I call this meeting to order, April 8th, 2024. Kevin, could you please take attendance? Uh, Nordyke is absent. Olson? Here. Skelton? Here. Boss Ward? Here. Winnegar? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge At this time, any visitors who wish to address the board may do so. We ask that you sign in when you enter the room and please list the topic. If you have not done so, please approach the podium and do. I ask that you refrain from listing any student by name or any personnel by name. If there's anyone who would like to address the board, as a reminder, no action will be taken this evening. Seeing none, uh, we move on to Tanager Happenings, Kelly Stone and Christian Sievers. We are here just to discuss the new class that was offered this semester, um, Breakthrough Exploratory. It's a peer me mediated program for students. And this is. Um, yep, I'm Kirsten Sievers. I'm a third year OT student over at the university. And I've had the chance to work with Kelly over the last 14 weeks to create this peer program and implement it for the students over at the high school. Um, if you'd mind advancing the slide to the next. So I, like I said, I've been working with Kelly over the last 14 weeks implementing my capstone project for, to finish out my time in my program. And I actually um, brought this capstone idea to Kelly and to John Fry and Jennifer, mm -hmm. and they were equally as passionate in this project as I was, and they actually turned my 14-week project into a semester-long peer program, and that's what we're gonna be sharing about today. Um, and my vision for this program ultimately was to implement a peer program, specifically a peer art program, for students with and without disabilities over at the high school to provide them the opportunity to um, work with each other on various art projects and ultimately to, hopes, uh, to hope in increasing their social connections and improving their social experiences. Um, if you would mind going to the next slide. Kelly is gonna talk about kind of the general structure of this program and talk about some of the fun activities we've done over the last 14 weeks. And just so you know, this has been an amazing, in my 26 years of teaching in this district, this has been the most amazing opportunity and class that I've ever been a part of, and that's hugely responsible to Kirsten. And we do not want her to leave this week. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to keep her. <laughs> um, this class, as mentioned, is part gen ed part special ed bringing them together to make connections and discuss diversity um sorry and a lot of the things that we do we try to do a lot of community events by going out into the community and having resources come in so if you go to the next slide you will see that we have had a lot of guest speakers. Um, Camp High Hopes, that was a wonderful one. And the students, not only the special ed students who would be able to maybe go to Camp High Hopes, but the other students, the gen ed students, that's an employ employment opportunity. And we had some that were very interested. Um, we've had Voc Rehab come in, speech and language. Um, USD audiology today we had dental hygiene mm -hmm. and we've had the Native American culture with Dr. Mark Daniels came in and did a meditation and self-care I think that was an extra special one for us and the students because we had some Native American students in there and it was to touch base with their culture um, we went on to field trips if we go back to the Community Connection Center well, not yet, but we will. We're going to SESDAC on Friday. We've read to the elementary <laughs> students, which is an amazing experience. We've been to Ms. Taggart's classroom and Ms. Smart's classroom. Mm -hmm. 
and we play games at the care center. And I think that was amazing to us because when we went to the care center, we thought, oh, are they going to enjoy this? We're walking out, and it's like, when can we go back? <laughs> and so we've been back twice favorite. now. And we toured the USD art department, and uh, Corey Nedler led mm -hmm. us on that. And it was interesting and talked a lot about the Oscar Howe Art Institute. And we have two students that have applied to that. So hopefully that will turn out well. And we do a lot of art, thanks to Kristen, Kirsten in the classroom. Um, we use the gym, a lot of activities. One that we enjoyed is to have everybody think of their teacher, a teacher in their school career that they really enjoyed. And we wrote letters and thanked them. And that was a very touching, touching thing. We have game days and a get to know you. And there are some photos. And just, it's making connections. It's being together. And a lot of students with disabilities maybe don't have the social outside of school. And this has provided them opportunities to learn friendship skills and practice them and have friends. Mm -hmm. And it has made a huge difference in quite a few of our students, as Mrs. Mockler would testify to. So we'll move on to the next slide. So as part of my capstone, I needed to ensure that this project was evidence-based. And these are just a few findings of the extensive research I've done for this project. Um, we know that kids spend a large amount of their day at school, and research has shown that the relationships they make at school are a strong predictor for their overall life satisfaction. Um, other research has shown lots of benefits for students, including intra and interpersonal development, um, including developments, um, improvements in their academic performance, increased engagement in school, um, a decrease of maladaptive behaviors, um, and an increase in their ability to develop meaningful friendships and develop social skills in order to develop those friendships. You can go on to the next slide. I would in interject in there that um, diversity. Mm -hmm. A lot of students have the fear like, oh, that's a SPED student or that's a SPED classroom. It has really changed that perspective for mm -hmm. these students because they're coming in, they're seeing there's different abilities, but they also see that they have some of the same abilities, or can, and it's just been amazing. Mm -hmm. So throughout the 14 weeks that I've been there, um, I provided four different reflection opportunities. If you want to, oh, this is the slide. Um, four different reflection opportunities to just get some subjective data and some feedback from students to see how the program was impacting them. And these are just a few of the ways that we saw students were impacted. Um, we saw an increase in their social participation and their social skills, not only our own observations of the students, but from their reports. You know, a student reported that they're not as talkative at home versus when they're in the program. Um, a student learned that starting by saying something nice to their peer when they see them um, throughout the day in the hallways, you know, can put a smile on their face. So being able to think of someone outside of ourselves, that's a huge mm -hmm. skill as an adolescent to learn. Um, we also saw um, an increase, a change of perspectives of their peers with disabilities. They learned that they like working with students of all kinds. They learned, they felt like the classroom was more of a community. They felt more comfortable talking to other peers who were different from them. Um, we saw an increase of knowledge and understanding of their peer. Two students reported that they didn't know that their uh, peer was good at art or had an interest in art or liked origami. Um, on a specific survey, we saw that um, six students said that they felt like they made at least one new connection while being a part of this program, which we feel like is huge. You know, just one connection can make such a difference. Um, and the next slide just has, you know, additional um, quotes that were provided from students on these surveys. I'm not going to go through all of them just to give you guys time to ask questions, but whether it was from these reflections or it was our own observations, we did feel like every single student, so out of the 10 students we had in this program, we felt like everyone did benefit from at least one of those things that I touched on in the last slide. So that is all we have to present to you guys. We'd like to open it up for any questions you have on the program that we've implemented. And in talking with Mr. Fry, um, we have put this class as an available option for spring semester next year. 
And I would like to see some way that we can keep that connection with the USD OT department and maybe try to figure out how to get some more supports for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Young lady, yeah. please consider teaching in this district. <laughs> <laughs> I may find myself in the school, but <laughs> OT and teaching, they, I feel like they, they definitely relate, so there'll be some overlap there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned 10 students. Does that mean you had five pairs of uh, five yeah. pairs? Yep, the way that it ended up working out, um, so we had two groups of two. So one student with a disability, one gen ed student that was supporting them. And then we ended up having two groups of three. Um, just the way it worked out, we had one student with a disability and two peers supporting them. We started out with 13 and two moved away and I think we have 11. 11, okay. 11. <coughs> And we didn't see much of a difference being paired up or having two gen ed with one ed. They both worked. Yeah. I appreciate you um, bringing this program to yes. the high school. And I appreciate you, Kelly, and the high school for helping to support it and, and facilitating it. Yeah, Sounds it was like a program an I was in. for all the students involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a program I was in in high school, so definitely was kind of a full circle moment, being something mm -hmm. I did in high school to providing this opportunity to other high school students. So, it's very mm -hmm. thankful that um, they were just as passionate as I was to implement this. I know Mark just walked out, but I do know <laughs> the organizations I think benefited as well. Uh, Mark came back just very excited and an eager to go back as well. So, I think the outside organizations probably equally appreciated as well. Without saying too much that that situation, um, we had left Mark left a chair open, and I had talked to a student, and we had it in honor of Kelsey, the student that passed away, and it was a beautiful moment of sharing and a healing. I think. Mm -hmm. So, I think too, this is a, a nice representation of of uh, the high school folks looking at our strategic plan and talking about ways to you know, tell their story and implement new, new curriculum and or offerings as well as continuing partnerships with USD. Mm -hmm. So it kind of mm -hmm. marks some boxes for us and a lot of things on our, our strategic plan. So thanks for everybody for, for looking at it. Well, thank you for the support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up here, we have Mrs. Johnson with the CTE program. Yeah. Hello, thank you. Yes, I am here on behalf of the Career and Technical Education, or CTE, department at the high school. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to give you an update on our course offerings for 2024-25 school year and see if you have any um, questions. On the screen now, we have our current CTE teachers plus an additional one that will be added um, in the coming school year. Uh, Grant Rydell has been teaching the arts and AV tech all along. Sarah Rohde, all the business and finance classes. Um, Mark Knightsky, the construction, manufacturing, and also the transportation um, courses as well. And then our family and consumer science is a new teacher this year, Hope Druin, who is currently deployed in Japan. She's with the South Dakota Air National Guard. So. We're finishing our year with a high quality long-term sub that we're thankful that we were able to secure. So um, we ended up okay there. But next year we are adding a career cluster with the health sciences and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. In career and technical ed, in order to be considered a career cluster, we have to have two or more approved courses within that career content field. Um, we are able to add the health sciences career cluster this year by adding a second course that will um, feed into that cluster. Um, those, this screen shows the courses that Mr. Rydell teaches in the arts and AV that are currently part of the CTE courses um, that he teaches. He also teaches some arts classes that are not considered CTE. The graphic design and photography, as well as working with Sarah Rohde on the capstone experience with that entrepreneurship and the work-based learning through the page creations and the visual media and marketing class. Then the business courses that Mrs. Rohde teaches, the intro to business, accounting one and two, personal finance, and then the entrepreneurship experience with the visual media and marketing and the youth internship. Um, she has proposed um, 
adding an employability course next year, which has been recommended by our Department of Labor partner as well. That will build a stronger prerequisite to the internship students so they've completed all those um, necessary employability skills and steps to set that internship success in place the semester prior to them actually starting their senior experience. Then Mr. Knightsky teaches the intro to technical education courses for freshmen, the small engine technology class, welding and advanced welding, building trades and residential construction, which is currently partnering with um, Mark Brothers Construction and our facilities manager for a structure on site at the high school. That will continue into next school year as well for that um, construction building that is being built for our maintenance staff, maintenance department. Then these are the courses that Mrs. Droon teaches in family and consumer science. We are also looking at adding in the culinary um, after she's had time to acclimate to this new position. We went with the foods and wellness and advanced foods this first year, but we know the culinary arts and the Pro Start program that um, Sarah Armbrust had had in place is a wonderful program as well. We want, um, hope to have a chance to get her bearings and learn her program, and then these students should be able to feed into an advanced line um, in courses down the road. And we're excited that Brandy Wallen has been um, happy to jump on board with our CTE bandwagon here. She already teaches a medical terminology course both semesters, but next year she is going to teach one semester of medical terminology, putting all those students into one semester, and then offering a health science careers course. And our goal, steps are in place with conversations with Sanford to put us certified nursing assistant pathway in that course as well could be a win for the community in Sanford as well as for our students. Then what we find when they reach their senior experience and are in that internship placement, they can have much richer opportunities in the healthcare field internship placement if they already have that CNA certification. So we feel like it's a wonderful um, industry credential that can grow our program and, and benefit our students and our community. So we're thankful for Brandy for um, welcoming that opportunity. And this week is actually South Dakota Week of Work in Career and Technical Education. And so we wanted to recognize our internship partners. And we are celebrating with them on Friday for a luncheon prepared by our Advanced Foods class. Um, we have 21 seniors placed in internships this year, which has been our largest class yet, thanks to tireless efforts by Mrs. Rohde and the other um, people that help support her to match up students with relevant placement opportunities and work-based learning. So on the next screens, just show some of those industry partners. We have some in all these placements on the screen. And this one as well, including um, in our school district for potential prospective teachers. And one of these business partners is also a Dakota Build Scholarship promoter and has offered that scholarship opportunity to the student who was in that internship placement. And there have been offers of um, full-time employment that have come from some of these internship placements as well. So very positive things that we look forward to sharing more about on Friday with our internship partners for a CTE appreciation luncheon. Um, and I'm excited that the program continues to grow and gets even, even stronger. So I did also share with you course descriptions if you wanted to see a little more details about each of those courses that were projected on the screen. But if you have any questions, we welcome you to come visit the classes, visit the school. The teachers would love to have you there in their um, hands-on spaces and jumping in with the students. So you are most certainly welcome anytime. Do you have any questions? Rachel. <laughs> with uh, Mr. Knightsky, I know he had a horticulture background. Um, and now he's kind of doing completely opposite. Do we have any intent to go into any of those horticulture classes? Is that what the FFA dream is eventually? Sorry, is that, that, that is the FFA dream. Asking. That's true, that is the FFA dream. Yeah. Initial um, survey information hasn't given us strong enough interest as of yet, nor do we have people that have the right qualifications to expand that at this time. And then we'd have to look at what are we giving up also to be able to offer the FFA unless we could hire another CTE staff person. 
Anything else, Dr. Elvis? No, that, that's that's a perfect example. We we would love to. We've done surveys of, of some of our kids and some of our parents. Uh, yes. And have some good feedback from there, but we'll have obviously some considerations with with staffing. Uh, adding the staff is what will be one of the complications at this point. Uh, but one of the things that the high school staff have to deal with, it, with, with Mrs. Johnson on this is uh, trying to find that robust curriculum, but also providing, um, you have to make sure you have the right staff members to teach it, but you also have to have a certain number of kids to take it to justify the course. So there's going to be a little bit of give and take and mixing of that, I'm sure, over the course of time while they, they get all of these, uh, some of these instructors are new to us, or relatively new, and we're just finding out some of their skill sets now. Um, and in partnerships with such, uh, with, with Sanford, for example, uh, our career workforce development uh, folks here in the community have really pushed that that be a good partnership. They need the help. We need the education side for the, for the kids. And, and so having uh, Brandy come forward to help teach some of those courses is going to, you know, by asking those questions, we're starting to find out we've got some different directions and pathways that we never knew were right there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's working out really nicely thus far. Have you explored the EMT pathway yet? Mm -hmm. I know Tony and Matt, I'm sure. Most schools offer EM, like Brandon Valley, they offer EMT. We're, well. we're embarking on this uh, certification. Go go EMT. Right. Yes, we envision that path. Matt will get very Rachel. jealous exactly. if we're putting up CNAs <laughs> and we're not putting up EMT. Right. So, um, very good prereq for any healthcare program. So, exactly. Thank you, Brandy, for leading that. Yes, so. absolutely. Thank you, board. So, thank you. All right, next up, we'll get to the fun part of the agenda, I guess. Um, any agenda changes, Mr. Elby? No, everything that was posted is what we have this evening. Great, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. First by Second. Carol. <coughs> Second. Second. <laughs> you okay there, Mark? Yeah. All right. Okay, second by Jacob. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next up, we have indication of conflict of interest for South Dakota codified law 3-23. This is Rachel and I have none. Jake and I have none. Mark and I have none. Excellent. Um, next up here, we have a consent agenda here this evening, which has approval of our minutes, resignations, new hires, and open enrollment bills. Um, we have a March 11th meeting minutes. Resignation, Courtney Wilson, fourth grade. Leanna Wells, part-time custodian. And a congratulations on a retirement of 32 years for Jill Amison. Um, would anything like to be pulled from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I would take a motion to approve. So moved. First by Mark. Second. Um, second by Carol. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Full same sign. Motion passes. Next up here, um, we are going to have Mitch and I think maybe Greg too. Um, here do a facilities review. We did test the sound earlier, so we're gonna see if it still works. If you follow along before, we know it takes a few minutes to get the sound all straightened out. All right, uh, Mitch or Greg, are you guys available? You bet. All right, there's yep. Greg. And Mitch is up there too. All right, welcome guys. I don't know who wants to go first, but the, the mic is yours. Sure, I go ahead and start with uh, just some of the updates as far as what we're doing construction wise. Uh, we're continuing to work our way through the classroom areas, uh, getting finishes in. Um, got a couple of them that are pretty much, uh, pretty much complete. Um, we got a, cu a couple more of them that will be complete here in the next couple weeks. And then working our way into the administrative areas, the band vocal art areas and the gyms. Um, the gym, the main gym, has uh, the wall mounted hoops up in there. All the um, paint and finishes are up in that area. The, the lighting is on in the main gym uh, and the remaining gym equipment will be going up here in the next one to two weeks. Uh, and then on the 22nd, so two weeks from today, we'll be taking a shipment of the wood floor to get that acclimated and ready to install. Um, so that, that gym will be coming together with all the equipment, wood floor and everything here in the next few weeks. So that's pretty exciting to see come together. Um, we'll continue to work our way um, through those corridors kind of out into that administrative area and uh, continue to put finishes in on uh, the band vocal art area. And then one of the last areas that we'll uh, finish up in is that uh, auxiliary gym. Right now we're using it for a lay down area for a lot of the other uh, finishes and materials and then we'll be putting the floor down in there. Uh, we also have on the exterior, uh, you may see uh, 
trying to move some dirt when we can, when the weather allows us. Uh, we're working on getting some of the curbing uh, rip completed for that drive-through area. Uh, we'll be looking at um, about a month out, we'll be doing the rest of the asphalt for that drive-through area, as well as the play areas to the north. Uh, and we'll, we'll be starting to do some of the landscaping here in the next month, some of the, some of the seeding. Um, I know the school's doing some uh, irrigation work and some sodding, so uh, you'll really start to see uh, some greenery out on that south side um, with that drive-through being completed. Uh, and then those uh, play areas and the fencing will be going in. Um, so we got some got some cool drone shots. I think we'll we'll share with you guys here. Um, this on Easter Sunday, I think uh, we took those, uh, and then we uh, got some additional pictures of the inside that uh, we shared as well. Okay. Greg, wow. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll just kind of relay some of the items that we've been coordinating during our meetings lately. Um, see the owner's team, they just recently um, confirmed the color for the acoustic wall panels. So I think this week um, they've been painting them red and gray and they're being installed in the main gym. And then we also put together kind of a, a layout for the future acoustic wall panels that may be located in the other student commons or classroom commons areas, like the first and second grade wing and third and fourth grade wing, and then some of its bedrooms as well. Um, we are also looking at kind of the timeout rooms that have wall pads, and we're looking at an alternate for the flooring material, other than placing carpet in those rooms, maybe placing um, of a a more um, pad, a floor material with more padding. And let's see, all the disciplines are continuing to walk through the site and structural and electrical have just recently been there. And then I've also been on site um, last Tuesday and did a thorough walkthrough of each one of the wings. And you know, as the building is nearing completion, the entire TSP design team will be walking through each one of the wings and each one of the rooms and really checking it for completion. So I think just like Mitch said, we'll be starting with area F and area C, which is the first and second grade wing and then the preschool kindergarten wing. Um, those wings are the both complete now. So that will occur in the next month here. In our process on the construction side is we kind of do a pre-punch uh, construction punch list before uh, Greg and his team come through to do our best to make sure we identify any of the, you know, maybe obvious um, things that need to be corrected so that uh, it helps them out when they go through and do their list so um, it's not such an expansive list. We like to try to keep the, keep the punch list as small as possible. Greg, I'm not for sure you're the one flipping through the pictures, but we always talk about that drain field kind of way in the back. Um, or is that right? The space that we talk about our yes. playground equipment. It's kind of you had a nice visual there, um, which of course our rain has probably helped that Lake Vermilion pond that we have going on back there. Yeah, if you so want to keep going, Daniel, you'll, you'll, it'll it'll be probably about your second or third picture. Oh, there you go. That That's one a good can, one. Yeah, yep. that one even shows it there. Where the mini excavators are at back there. If you want to go back one more, Daniel, the other way. Well, I guess keep going. There you go. Right, just go hold and hold right there for a second. I guess just something to point out for the, the viewing public is you can start to see on the very bottom there, of course, that's our pickup drop-off lanes. And you can see that half moon that's still kind of uh, muddy and dirty there. Uh, we'll have uh, basically that grassy area, that dark area there will be grass and we'll have that new Vermilion Elementary electronic message board there. Uh, then you can sort of see from the road there that that would be a, a one way in for people to pick up and drop off kids. So they'll come in right there at the very bottom right of the picture. They'll drive around the half moon and then you know drop off someplace in the front there, exiting to the far west side there, which is Carr Street. Uh, if we're looking at the front of the picture here, if you look at the far back left side, the very northwest corner, the dark 
soil there, that is about where the playground equipment will be at. Uh, like Rachel noticed, um, right to the north of that, you'll see the, you know, the, um, some of the equipment, heavy equipment that moves the dirt around. North of that is a retention area. That will get feathered out, but that water will be water from our buildings, from our, uh, from our playground, water from the blacktop surfaced area. We'll all go into drains underground and roll that direction, and it'll end up coming out on the very northwest side of that. So there'll be a, an eventual swale there that could retain some water, but it'll get pumped out and pushed out into the, to the sanitary sewer system, uh, into the, the gutter system that the city provides there. So, um, but the, the equipment right where, where we see the dark, work, the dark soil there, uh, in the coming months, we'll be putting a new uh, blacktop and things across the back for hard surface and then our accessible rubberized surface as well as wood chipped area for kids playground needs will be right in that area so while the board might be thinking of a few questions I'll just hit a few other highlights from from the notes that the board uh, has seen like Mitch had said uh, the outs outside is, is is largely the metal panels are on the are are largely complete there uh, you can see we have a lot of dirt work to do, but the outside is coming around very, very nicely. The interior conditions continue to be everything from some painting to the carpeting, the locker installation. Those things are all getting into their final stages now. Gymnasium work is going on as we speak. Uh, the wood floor is being prepped uh, for installation within the next month, and then the auxiliary gym uh, has a what's called a jur floor or gur floor. It's a rubberized synthetic floor that gets rolled out and then pressed together and heat sealed to the floor. Um, what you're seeing now is some of the interior pictures of classrooms. That's one of the special ed classrooms there um, with those high um, vestibule ceilings that we talked about, Claire Story windows. Um, our staff, the elementary staff, took a tour back on March 22nd and so um, they've got an opportunity to see their future conditions and uh, a lot of excitement, lots of questions about, hey, what about this? So some of those things that were noted from those discussions, we come back and took it back to TSP and Houseman's group and tried to find some solutions or answers to those. Uh, what you see there is uh, you know, an interior normal classroom for most of our pre-K, uh, well actually our pre-K and K are slightly different than the rest of them, but that would be a grade one through five, a typical classroom there. Uh, other things that we've been talking about now is, is with our kitchen remodel, we've redesigned our serving line option and talking with the elementary folks and the folks from Lunchtime Solutions. Um, if you remember our early stages, we talked about that the kids would walk from the elementary into the middle school servery, come out the uh, west doors and walk into the auxiliary gym. Um, and while on paper that looked very good and it was uh, designed very well to meet the needs of the kiddos and the, the kitchen staff, the teachers and the administration said, boy, that's gonna be a long way for our littlest kids to walk. Is there any way we could change and shorten that trip up so we don't have so many kids losing trays or dumping trays along the way? So in terms of looking at that, we were able to find what, we could, what was a dry food storage area um, that was connected to the uh, new auxiliary gym to the current middle school. Uh, to the back side of the kitchen in fact and upon further discussion with TSP and house when we found out you know that space would probably serve well for a servery and it butts right directly up to the to the auxiliary gym walls and the kids can walk through there and go right into the to their seated area so after further discussion we had to go back out rechange the plans a little bit and, and Greg and Mitch and their groups worked with LSI and restaurant supply and some others to reconfigure that drawing and remodel that kitchen. We still have some significant work to do there, but the, the second and third week of May, we will start that process so it'll be ready when school starts. Um, other things that we've noticed uh, are really been putting our efforts towards was, what, is the, what does the move look like for our elementary folks coming in? So a moving committee was developed uh, by Ms. Parsons and Mr. Jacobs to uh, talk about what what does that move look like and so now what they're doing is they're meeting as a committee of teachers and staff to work on what does it look like on the to to, to prepare for this gigantic move uh, so they're working on a schedule where teachers can um, 
have planned time um, for those in-service days that the board graciously gave at the end of the year to work in their classrooms. Uh, we've got some extra staff that will be available to help with that. Um, Mr. Walser is ordering boxes and working with the principals to get pallets and box materials so teachers will be able to find what they need. Different color coding systems will be used per grade level so that all the first grade, for example, will have everything marked so we know when we move it, it'll get to the right location. If we see a, a pink slip on a box, that's not, that's not first grade. It doesn't belong in wherever it's at. It needs to go back to first grade. Uh, so it's really gonna come down to getting that move organized and then eventually we'll have things such as, uh, in talking with the USD, they, the, uh, Coach Nielsen has uh, graciously allowed, he's going to let his football team come work with our football team at the high school to help move. Uh, we've also got uh, uh, access through uh, hiring federal prisoners from Yankton to come over and help us with the move, as well as some local folks with uh, trailers and trucks and enclosed or flatbed trailers for that. But right now um, we've got, uh, a, a committee of teachers and staff that are working to finalize that. The same can be said with our playground committee. We're in the final stages of the approval of the universally accessible playground equipment that you've heard us talk about. Um, basically, we're at the stage now where we're, we'll be able to show the committee the final stages of the new handicap accessible equipment as well as the, uh, the surface, the rubberized surface that we so desired. It's all within reach, within the budget that we have and with the gracious uh, grant dollars and donations we've received, we will be able to put a hard surface for basketball hoops across the back of the school. We'll be able to put in the uh, accessible playground equipment, the accessible playground surface, uh, sidewalks, sod, and then uh, bringing over Jolly's uh, current playground system and putting it over wood chips uh, there as well. So we're gonna have a nice large with a uh, playground system with a variety of accessibility points as well as a variety of things for kids to socialize and play on. But we also have a committee uh, including parents and teachers that are working on that committee. And finally we have what's uh, uh, two more committees that we've developed in the last month which is a scheduling committee. This is really one of the bigger uh, tasks of moving into a new facility is finding out what does the scheduling of that uh, system look like. Does Everything from the start and end times to the bells to lunch to uh, length of periods. Can we get common planning time for our, all of our first grade teachers, for example? Uh, do we have enough specials that we could allow that to happen? And so this committee will be working on um, all of those, trying to find those answers. Uh, will we have to adjust our start and end times uh, at the day? We will find that out as we start to work into this schedule. But right now we're mainly working around the lunch period and then working both directions from there. That spills us over into our last committee, which is our procedure and duties committee. And this committee, again, made up of our staff and administrators, are working to talk about all those odds and end things, uh, things that might be tied with the move, things that might be tied with the schedule, such as um, bus pick up and drop off. And how are we gonna keep the parents from the middle school from clogging up Princeton so we can get the buses uh, to come down and get into the back of the school. Those things have to be worked through. Where will we, uh, uh, how will we get our staff in and out of the parking lot before the buses get there? Uh, how will we make sure that the, the kids that are coming off of the Dartmouth Street can get accessibility to the school with, while they're crossing two lanes of parked traffic or parked cars? Those are the types of details that this group is, is going to be working with to help us assign staff to certain locations, to help us assign um, uh, folks to be uh, available to help make this happen. Are we gonna have to have a couple practice runs in the summer where we ask to bring all the buses and bring every staff member that would be willing to come show up at the elementary school at this time, we wanna see what this looks like. So these are the types of things that the committee are working on. Um, and so that, that's uh, been a, a big undertaking and we, sh we appreciate all the the staff that have uh, uh, volunteered to be a part of those committees because that's a lot of work. It really is uh, a lot of questions to answer, but every time they meet, they get one more thing answered, which we really appreciate. So uh, I don't know if there's any more questions on that or Mitch or Greg, if there was anything that we uh, failed to mention about the project so far. Uh, deadline is still mid-July, um, Mitch and Greg. We feel like we're still on target for that.
Correct. Perfect. Correct. Yep. And then we'll be in the, of course, in the kitchen area working on the uh, renovation of the existing kitchen area through uh, right up through until school starts. We'll have that ready to turn over. Yeah. That's our biggest scary. Yeah, that's the, yeah, like, that's the one thing service. we don't want to have any glitches with because, of course, we produce all the food for elementary and middle school out of the uh, out of the middle school kitchen so no pressure Mitch yeah, yeah. we got we've been doing a lot of coordinating on that we, we, <laughs> we can we can feel that the need to get that done and we'll uh, we'll make sure it happens for you guys you're allowed zero uh, sack lunch days <laughs> Fair enough. all right excellent any questions for Mitch or Greg good update thanks mr. Elby yeah. thank you I know, guys. Uh, Ms. Parsons at a kindergarten roundup was definitely taking uh, names for the practice run because everybody wants to make sure it goes smoothly. So, <laughs> all right. Well, next up here, um, going into our new business, we have school facilities lease agreement with the Vermilion Community Theater. My guess is Anthony, maybe, maybe Gretchen too. Just Anthony. All right. You're just here for support. You just wanted to hear about the new building, right? Yeah. <laughs> Were you, put, you were part of the tour on the 22nd, weren't you? You weren't? That was a great tour. It's coming along nicely. All right, Anthony, what do we got for July Community Theater? Hello, friends. Uh, my name is Anthony, Anthony Burbach. I'm here, I'm here on behalf of Vermilion Community Theater. I do have a request, but before I get there, I'd like to give you a one-minute synopsis of what we've been up to. Since Vermilion Community Theater was reinvented in 2002, VCT has staged 33 productions. 18 of them large full-scale musicals. Members of our organization wrote three of those shows right here in Vermilion. 11 years ago, we started keeping track of the audiences. Since that time, we have played to over 15,000 patrons. Last summer's production of Disney's Newsies enjoyed the most attended opening night in VCT history, with over 1,600 people seeing the show over the four nights. Over the last three shows, we've averaged about 50 onstage actors, 30% of which are young actors. Last year's youngest cast member was seven years old, and our shows are always enhanced by the incredible talent we attract from USD. And that is just on the stage. Backstage is an artistic production crew of 25. About 30 people work on sets, paints, and costumes. Below the stage, we have another 15 to 25 musicians, Live music coming from below the stage is not to be taken for granted. It is becoming increasingly less common because most community theaters can't handle such a large undertaking, but that is something I've always felt very important. For the most part, our work is volunteer driven. Actors are not paid. The band gets a small stipend. While some of our lead artistic staff are paid honorariums, most of the work is done purely for the love of the art form and belief in the power of live theater. Even so, our ambitious productions are incredibly expensive and costs are only rising. There are sets, costumes, props, box office technology, marketing and printing costs. And show royalties have doubled since the pandemic, exceeding $6,000 for a single production. For many in our community, VCT productions are the first and only live theater they have access to. That's why we are staunchly committed to keeping ticket prices low and affordable. I consider Vermilion Community Theater a partner with VHS. Over the years, we have organized and raised money for many projects from major lighting and sound upgrades to working with inspectors to keep the stage rigging in good shape. This year, we donated money to help pay for the new psych, and the psych is the white curtain that is in the back of the stage that we can put color on that all those stage shows use, um, and that psych had fallen apart over years of wear. We also are supporting the spring musical with hardware and software to help the keyboards sound better. Our, summer show this, our show this summer is Beauty and the Beast and can be seen July 12th to the 15th. Like last year's show, there will be many parts for kids, including mostly kids in your school system. It is a fun Disney show that will likely have over 50 people on stage and I already know we'll have 20 plus people in the orchestra. We are also hosting our yearly summer workshop starting June 24th, and we're delighted by the response as we have nearly reached our full capacity for this event. I am here tonight to ask that again our building rental be waived and we continue our mission, bringing quality theater to Vermilion community and providing a wonderful experience to the thousands of people that are affected by our show. And I would love to have questions. Any 
Any questions for Anthony? He wants one. <laughs> I, I just want to move. <laughs> Anthony, does, did your request also, was that for the summer theater group, um, to the summer theater camp, mm -hmm. besides what's going to be product, produced? Yeah. Okay. Our, the, the main stage theater kind of is wider, and the, the week long is in the middle. So okay. it's kind of all the same time frame, but yes, we're asking for time in to cover both of those. Both of those. Perfect. Thank you. I was thinking about the show choir camp, but that one's in May. Right. Let's work it out. So and different Trish has already talked with me. We're not going to step on her heels. She was very <laughs> respectful of us and made sure that she wasn't getting in our way. So, Great. Any questions? Perfect. Just for the board's recognition, um, obviously we've done this for years and years, and, and we've always previously waived it. What has been recently is just that if there's a custodial fee that's necessary because the days of shows, our custodians typically do the cleaning of the restrooms uh, naturally for sanitation and other needs, um, that that would be part of that motion as well for, for your consideration. I'll just say I remember coming to Vermilion and seeing that addition that the community added on and um, what it has um, brought to our community is really awesome. And so it's just kind of fun to hear this request and then be talking about the elementary school and all these <laughs> other things. So thanks. So you don't have to wait for an answer. I would take a motion. Um, I move. Got a motion um, first by Mark. Second. Second by Jacob. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Next up here, another fun request. Um, we have approval of the school reunion coming up here. Mrs. Weimar. <laughs> Katarina Weimar, also on the All School uh, Committee. So we were here uh, last week and we're back again um, to officially make this official. Um, we'd like to ask um, to be able to hold the All School Reunion at the VHS premises. Um, just to get it back on the record, we're having the reunion from June 14th through the 16th. It's the 15th where we would want to be on the premise. Um, we would like to have school uh, tours in the afternoon. I think that wasn't discussion. What we're really here for is the evening program where from six to nine we'll have a, a social and dinner. Um, the hope is to be able to use it outside, but with incremental weather we would move it inside. Uh, we, um, we do want to be able to serve wine or beer with the, with the meal and um, we're trying to take proceeds. Any proceeds that we have would go back to the the um, Vermilion Public School Foundation um, or the Booster Club. It, we're we're going to leave that open to people what, you know, what they want to give for. Um, so our request would be that we be able to have the event on the 15th at the school from 6 to 9. Um, we'd like the cost waive and then we talked about this custodial we would pay for. Damon, did I, or Dr. Adler, did I? Yes, perfect. And uh, I gave the notes to the to the board about this. Okay. Uh, this is obviously a board decision. Uh, they would also have to apply for a sound and a uh, basically a variance from the city ordinance that they could provide uh, or have uh, alcohol on the premise. And the city has historically given those out. As long as they don't have a problem with it, and you don't, this can move forward with whatever your decision is. Uh, maybe we didn't mention we'd also like to have music there, so it, that right. that ordinance right. would be there, <laughs> a sound ordinance as well. Yeah, right. I think the inside space, if it was weather, would be the commons or the gyms. Right. The commons. Right. I move we approve. I guess I, I had some questions on the more the alcohol side of things. Um, <clears throat> so would that be just during the social portion of it, it sounds like? Yes. And then would that be inside the building or just on the outside or weather dependent, it sounds like? It, weather when dependent. It, if we can be outside, we will be. Yeah, and it, to be clear, we're gonna have all, everything else there too. You know, we'll have um, non-alcoholic drinks as well. Um, because we were hoping that families will come. I guess I'm from a, a small town. Um, there are events that we do on occasion, such as the fire department having their annual banquet. I think it's 
I'm okay with it. Um, I would appreciate it if it was more outside than inside, but that's okay. I think it's a great community partnership and it helps with the school. Um, I appreciate that it's not like a six to two a.m. I think just yeah. being a little restricted, yeah. Yeah. six to nine, you know, have a beverage. I think the one time in maybe school history, I guess we could probably say yes. Um, but I'm, I would be in favor of it. And and just so you know, we've also put on our agenda that afterwards people can go to the bars downtown. So that's why we're not thinking it's going to be this big thing. Um, you know, uh, that they can go downtown and, you know, we'll bring some business to the community as well. Yep, I guess that was my main concern of, yeah. and that would make sense of it only going till 9 o'clock. Well, if you want to do after party stuff, well then yep. you're going to have to go head downtown. downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're done. <laughs> Just don't want newspapers or different things that way. The Million School District. Yeah. So. Is there a requirement to partner with a, an establishment that has a liquor, li a beer license, or anything? Or maybe that's all through the city. Kel yeah, Kelsey's working on all the all the requirements for that. So we're kind of doing it in the same time. So we're ready to go if, if yeah. It's and I don't think there is. At least that's what she was telling us, but we'll get that all clarified. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that is all goes through with the city, um, I appreciate you holding the event, and it sounds like fun. I would be supportive of the request. Perfect. So, any other questions? If not, we have a first by Mark on the table. I'll second. Second by Carol. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same, uh, opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Good. It'll be a busy June and July for Vermillion. <laughs> um, next up here, we have public hearing for approval of um, a Title grant. This is for the Title VI. I'm Jennifer Olofsson, Director of Special Services. Um, I'm excited to say that we are, Jan has managed to get uh, 15 more forms on those 506, so we're up to 65 students that we've yes. identified that way. So my hope is that our award money will go up this year, um, so we're able to find more things that we can do with the kids. Um, Jan has said that she's returning next year, so talking to Dr. Elby, we're looking at a 4% raise for her. Um, so we kind of figured that in um, as her salary is $13,520 and then the rest of whatever I get, which I can um, forward to the board after I get that approval from Easy on the total amount that we get. We don't have that yet. So um, Jan would like to continue with the drummers and bringing in speakers and things like that um, to help promote our Native American uh, classes and students. She's currently working still with USD. Um, sounds like they're going to try and go for that grant again that she got this year, which will help us in many other ways as far as if they want to um, attend conferences and, and different events and things like that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, graduation. We're going to replicate last year's graduation um, and give out the quilts and then see what else we can do to maybe stock that um, quilts up again for another couple of years. Um, hopefully with that grant money that we get from USD is I think the way that she's looking at trying to go about it. Um, I think that's about all that we have. She'd like to do some more of the field trips and then get some more of the consumables but I know she goes through Dr. LV and I in order to get those kinds of things approved. So any questions for me? Remind me, is this a one-year grant or two years? How long is the duration? I think it was just a one-year grant because they're looking at reapplying again for the, for the title si I'm sorry, the title oh, for the six, six It is a year. Yeah, each year I have to reapply. Yes. So I've done part one so far. This was part of part two, so I'll get that wrapped up tomorrow and get that, hopefully. <laughs> get the acceptance uh, letter from them. They usually don't take very long, a couple of weeks, and they have the response back of how much money we'll get for that. And then I'll sit down with Kevin and Damon and kind of divide out what that'll look like, so. Just, just a note on that, this, this our Title VI has really turned into a nice, impressive uh, thing over the last several years. Our principals and 
uh, Jennifer particularly, and of course Jana Stalling, our, our leader in that group, have really done a nice job. We've got uh, all nine tribes in South Dakota represented in our middle school and high school. We've had um, culinary meals prepared from um, Native American chefs for parent night activities. We've had drummers and dancers. In fact, we just had one today. Um, we've got an honor ceremony, which has become quite popular for our Native American students, similar to our baccalaureate uh, that we have yearly. Um, parent meetings, other things uh, besides supplies and other things that kids might need. Uh, this, this grant has helped paid for all that, and of course it's supplemented by the district as well. But uh, yeah, it's really turned into a nice program. I'm glad we've got it. And, it, and as long as those numbers continue to improve, that'll just hopefully get us more dollars mm -hmm. for that program. So that's good. I discovered that honoring program last year by accident. I just happened to go to the park because it's two blocks away from the house. <laughs> And it was beautiful. It was beautiful, yeah. yes. Thank you. I would think that we'd probably do it um, about the same time. It was a week before graduation, I think, last year. So keeping that same time frame seemed to work out for everybody involved. So. I think she scheduled it for the 8th, if I remember correctly, okay. or the, the Wednesday before, because it's the same night as the senior meal and the baccalaureate. But it's at okay. 4 o'clock at Prentice Park. It's an outdoor ceremony. If the weather gets inclement, obviously we move it. But. Right. <laughs> we always had that backup plan last year, too. So, okay. Any Thank other you, questions? Jennifer. I think we can maybe take a couple of these at one motion, if that's all right. Um, next up here, we have approval of some adult volunteers. We have Jason Hollock with tennis, Tara Oyen, and Alexandra Ock with softball. Questions on those? Okay. We can move on. Um, item E is approval of certified staff transfer. Um, maybe, um, Mr. Elby, you'd like to talk about our SPED education teacher transfer. Yes, um, you've probably noticed uh, we've talked about this quite a bit uh, the last couple of years. Uh, in our SPED world, like almost all of our teaching positions, it's just getting harder and harder to find uh, quality people and, and people that are able to, to come to Vermillion um, and, and work for us. Uh, we've been really blessed that the ones that we found have been rock stars for us. Um, Mr. Weedle is one of those folks that happens to have a dual certification and so uh, the district offered us a stipend for some of our internal transfers of staff that if they'd like to transfer uh, and use their SPED degree um, and, and leave the general ed section then they would be able to be a, uh, uh, apply for a stipend which uh, Doug is one of those staff that's already done so, and we still have feelers out with some of our own staff. Of course, we're advertising outside the district as well uh, in an attempt to do that, but we're glad and happy to see Doug move over, and um, Jennifer will be glad if we can get our, our SPED department to full, full capacity. Any questions for Mr. Elbiano? If not, I will look for a motion um, here before we flip the page, probably C, D, and E which would be um, Title VI grant, adult volunteers, and certified staff transfer. I take a first by Mark. Second. So, second by Carol. All in favor say aye. 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 Hold same sign, motion passes. Right, flip the page. Got a long agenda today, Mr. <laughs> um, our first up here is um, probably discussion first about our strategic plan. We had a uh, um, an early meeting last month um, where we had Tom Oster go ahead and give us kind of an update of what that strategic plan is looking like. So maybe Mr. Elvey? Yes. Um, in talking with, um, well, Carol, you can jump in any time, but in talking with our administrative team and talking just to give a quick uh, overview about how this came to be, our strategic plan was uh, put into action last fall when our board went out to, to bid to find out uh, if we could find a consulting form for, uh, firm to help us reestablish goals for the next three to five years within the district. Um, Dakota Ed Consulting was the, the approved package. They came in and worked with uh, our staff. They surveyed staff, students, parents, and community, and created um, a list of things that we do well in our district and the things that we could potentially do some work to improve. Uh, from that list, um, we uh, entertained a group of internal and external um, focus group members, the internal was all staff members, people associated, board members, uh, staff members, classified administrators, and certified staff. And they went over the results of the, the survey and talked about some strategic plans and, and goals associated with what the, the consulting firm found to be um, areas of improvement and things that we're doing well. 
That same model was used with outside uh, external um, focus group, which was people from the business community, again, biz, uh, school board members, administrators, and then parents and or um, just actually community members didn't have to have kids in the district to be a part of that. And they went over the same set of questions and evaluated the answers and then from there a set of goals were created. Those goals were shared with the administrative team um, and of course with the school board uh, and from there then administrators took uh, and shared portions of that plan back with the staff to uh, share some things. You've, the, the staff has heard and the board has heard me talk a little bit about we've accomplished some things from our strategic plan. Some of them the day after we got the document we were already saying well we can do that tomorrow and we were able to you know, improve communication or invite others into conversations, things like that. Uh, so anyway, where we're at today was our final stages of looking over the plan and for final approval or at least having more board discussion about uh, its implementation or its need to get out to staff or uh, eventually it has to be approved so that we will take this, publicize it on our website and just say, folks, if you're looking at ways that we're trying to improve our district, look on our school website or go into the office because we can give you a copy of the strategic plan. So that's sort of the, um, the um, plan tonight is to ask questions or maybe uh, take a look at if there was any things that we needed from the board in terms of direction moving forward. I just had a couple of questions um, as we kind of looked over what um, Tom Oster had shared with us, and um, I, he had um, different categories and, and action steps, which I um, appreciated. I guess I'm just, um, you know, interested in making sure that we, you know, have um, have plenty of eyes on it mm -hmm. um, to look it over and see that, you know, these are reasonable action steps. Um, I know that for this action, or these action steps in particular, um, it's designed as having an individual responsible, um, but some of them are quite vague. So I, <laughs> I'm wondering if a little bit of time and thinking through, you know, do we have a point person? I know some strategic plans might have a steering committee or a particular champion for, for something. Um, just to kind of follow through with accountability. And then, um, you know, I also wondered about the timelines, all the timelines here for next year, which I know that this was, you know, is a, a draft, or I saw it as a draft. So we're moving into a new building and everything. I wondered if a little more attention on our end sure. to, you know, um, think through some of the responsibilities and reasonable timelines and goals considering the big move for so many of our staff too. So I like what we have. I just feel like maybe there's some more things on our end that should be talked through before officially approving, I guess. Sure. Is it something you'd like to have a separate meeting to talk about with the admin team or just a couple on the admin team or what were you? Maybe. Just us yeah. to keep thinking I th about it? Well, or? I, um, yeah, I guess I just uh, thought maybe we, uh, more discussion with the board and maybe admin too, I guess, yeah. If you, if, I, um, I don't I'm know. I'm interested in others' thoughts, I guess. If, um, I, if sure. you want, I don't know which committee that might fall under, if it's policy committee, could lead that, then we could have the principals uh, be a part of that, and then from the principals, it could be filtered down to staff over the course of the next month in preparation for a May meeting. Um, and then they could add or, or you know, especially on the timelines, if, if, if others feel the same as you do, Carol, where we could say, boy, that's pretty vague. We should be able to get that by December of 2025 or 2024 or whatever. Because some of our goal statements are basically, yeah, within the next year or whatever. So if that, if that would uh, be a place to start, we could assign it to policy committee with uh, the help of the administrators to filter down through staff, if that works. I guess my, my thought too is, you know, as soon as you get that strategic plan approved, it's gonna change the next day anyways, <laughs> um, personally. So I mean, I, I, I like the content. There probably are some little things that could be finesse, especially when you got all the groups taking time to look at it. But I think if they need that start 
first to then move on. So I'm, I'm okay with probably where it's at today, knowing that once they start to look at it, it's gonna, it's gonna evolve. It's meant to be a working document. Um, it's not meant to be a PDF and then not changed. So I think those are all good recommendations that can probably just continue to happen even after approval today. But I don't know what we need for to keep moving this project along if we want to. I guess maybe I'm interested in what's, what is our role in it as far as a board? Maybe that's my, the core of my question. <laughs> In terms of what's like, what's the what's our role as far as um, you know being aware of what things are happening and where things are. Okay. Are you talking in terms of what's what things have been accomplished, what hasn't, what needs to be addressed, those types of ones? Yeah. <laughs> if yeah, others don't I'm have sure. concerns, that's fine. I appreciate the conversation. <laughs> We also want to make sure that all of these goals are SMART goals. Yeah. I think it's just going to take time to keep, I mean, it's, they gave us the draft and the framework, and then it takes the whole entire school board, admin team, staff, teachers, to continue to, to get, build it. So I'm okay. I think it's a great framework. He did a lot of time and, and all the focus groups. There's other little things that will add to it, but that's why I appreciate it being a working document. And then once you dive into it and really start to have discussion points, then you're going to change the timeline. You're going to get the right people on it. It's meant to be vague for that purpose. So when it says staff, I'm sure when Damon looks at it, he'll start to name the staff in the plan, probably going forward. Absolutely. Whatever you guys would make you most comfortable. And, and basically, if you want, um, you know, reports at the monthly board meeting to, you know, to basically hold us accountable to say, hey, I want a part of your report is to say, what have we accomplished in our strategic plan? Or have you changed any of that? We can make whatever adjustments along the way that makes you comfortable. Um, and of course, obviously, it will largely fall in the hands of our admin team to, to help address that as well. So we can make that part of our monthly meetings as, as necessary. I've worked with Carol long enough to know I'd be very happy to give it another month. It wouldn't bother <laughs> me at all. Um, it doesn't bother me at all to go another month. Why not? After we've gone this far, happy to do that, Carol. Um, so we can keep fest happy to do that. It's not, this isn't an emergency, nope, you know. Nope. So if you want some more eyes on it and things, happy to, to not approve it tonight. Um, it's been good conversation. So, but I would like the next kickoff. So maybe it is the policy meeting or so, some, sure. something between yeah. now and then yeah. to just force yeah. us to continue to keep eyes on it. And I'll put our, so. uh, put it on our admin agenda for later in the week to say that we need to start filtering this down so more people have eyes on it yeah. and get some more feedback. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate that. that. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. You guys good with that? All right. So no motion tonight. It's, it's a partnership, Carol. We got this. We got it going on. Okay. So next up here, we have um, South Dakota DOE waiver. Yes, uh, this is a, uh, one of the strategies that South Dakota, the Department of Education, allows school districts. If they're having trouble filling a position, they allow you to have um, plans of intent and waivers in place that you can put a teacher into a different teaching role and then allow them time to either gain the content expertise and certification or if they've done it for so many years, then they have to leave that position. They, they, they give you time to work through that. So schools use that flexibility, and we've used that flexibility in, in our district. And one of the places we've used it is in our SPED department at the high school. Jerry Bartles is one of our high school teachers who's certified in uh, social sciences and language arts. But we're using him in the capacity of special education, where he's teaching those courses to special education students. Uh, he's also teaching an art course through that section, um, which he's not uh, highly qualified to do. He's not certified to do such. But because we have that opportunity through the Department of Education, we've used it. This year, we'd like to uh, have the third and final year of that, which is called a waiver program. What I'm asking for tonight for the board is uh, to allow us to continue to use Jerry in that capacity. He's done a great job. Students like him, and he does um, meets the goals of the program with, with his instruction. Uh, to allow us to continue that, the, board, the Department of Education now requires, if you're doing it for a third year, that you have it in this forum, which is a public forum, to say that the board is now in you know, knowledge that this is happening 
and endorses for the administration to approve that. So I'm just asking for a motion to continue to do that. We will continue to see, search for special ed teachers for that department, but going forward, we'd like to make sure that we have a place for Jerry because he's helped us out well in the last two years, so. I've heard great things about, <coughs> excuse me. I've heard great things about Jerry and this job, so I'd like to move approval. Okay, thank you. We got a first by Mark. Second. Second by Jacob. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign, motion passes. Thank you, Jerry. Um, next up here is approval of our health care rates for the 24-25 school year. Kevin. Uh, we, this is an annual renewal that we have taken in front of the board. Um, it's included in your packet here for the numbers that are included this year, not only the rate increase, but the new premiums that will be on each of our plans there. Um, a little bit more painful this year than most, but it is what it is. Are you gonna say the percent increase out loud, The 18% increase <laughs> that we have for our health insurance. All right. And that goes into effect July 1st? Correct. You can see uh, on that page, though, it does show the effect and the uh, positive impact that being in a pool such mm -hmm. as, as the one that we are in can, can have, um, whereas the rates would be much larger increases elsewhere. Any questions for Kevin? All right, we'll move on probably to the next one here, and then we can do a motion for all four of these. Um, don't know what it means, but approve the membership of the Interlocal Purchasing System and OMNIA Partners Purchasing Cooperative. I'm guessing that's yours, Kevin, too? It is. All right. I included a little bit of information in the packet on these ones as well. Really what these are are um, cooperative purchasing uh, agreements that we have with a couple of different cooperatives. We are already a part of, of two different ones. This would just extend ourselves with free membership to both these um, uh, purchasing co-ops as well. What we can do with these is if they have bid out, um, whether it's equipment or different projects, uh, we can piggyback off of those bids and lock in prices that might be lower than what we can get um, if we go ahead and bid them out just by ourselves. And an example of that would be playground equipment. Mm -hmm. By doing a, approval with this, with these types of agreements, we can get better deals on playground equipment that other schools have, have led the way for us with. So, we appreciate the purchasing power. Yep. Any questions on that? All right. Next up here, we have the FY24 budget supplement. This is the uh, second budget supplement for the year. Um, on the general fund side of things, we have got a number of uh, different items there, but as you can see, some of this is offset by other income that we are bringing in. Uh, specifically, any of the professional development items on there are either have been part of our ESSER grants or are being funded by our Public School Foundation, which has uh, been a great partner with us for some professional development opportunities that uh, a lot of our staff members in the last couple of years and continuing on to next year have been able to go to national conferences because of that partnership. Uh, the one that is on the very top there, we have got uh, for our health pair, that is just a coding change. We needed to uh, increase our budget authority with that coding change, but it just decreases it elsewhere. Uh, it shows up as a net positive here, but really it's, it's, um, it nets out to zero. It's just a matter of changing somebody um, from one place to another. Uh, we've got some of our services there that we needed to supplement our budget on. And at the very bottom, um, we don't always budget for quite as much success as we have in our co-curriculars. And uh, thankfully this year we had some great success there, but uh, state event travel um, caused us to for, uh, has some budget overruns in a couple of different areas. On capital outlay, uh, this is even more so uh, being supplemented by grant funding. Uh, we have our COP security grant, our ESSER three grant. We had different areas there that we were able to purchase some technology and uh, along with that is our E-rate grant. So we've got a number of different projects that are being undertaken 
in our capital outlay fund that uh, we've got additional expenditures, but we have got revenue to offset with those grant dollars. The one large one there that we have out of local fund balance is our cla uh, elementary classroom furniture. That is just a timing thing. Um, we do still have pro capital uh, project funds that are available, but by the time we pay the final bill on this, those capital project funds will likely be depleted, so we will be spilling over into capital outlay funds, which has been the plan all the way along uh, with this project that we would be tapping into some capital outlay reserves. Special education fund, um, put some very minor uh, changes there. Um, one of them with our residential program tuition, we had some increases. And then uh, the food service fund, we've got some um, just fairly minor adjustments there. Uh, anytime we've got additional expenditures on our food, so food service fund, we've generally got revenues to offset those. So if our participation is going up, if we've got um, additional expenditures usually, you know, and this would, that would be the case with this one here is we've got additional federal reimbursements coming in and uh, money from students and parents to fund their accounts. Any questions to Kevin? Thanks Kevin, for keeping track of all that. this one, would you like a, a separate motion for this one by itself? No, okay. we can do, all right. So that means we, I would take a motion for um, items H, I, and J. So our health care rates, membership in our purchasing, and our budget supplement number two. So moved. Second. First by Jacob, second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign, motion passes. Next up, you're almost to Z here, Damon. Um, we have um, K, discuss school board elections. That'll be coming up in June. Uh, we have got two three-year terms uh, vacant that will be vacant at the end of this year here, Rachel and Shane's positions. We had three uh, individuals that filled out the petitions and had 20 valid signatures from uh, members of our school district. And uh, this is uh, the setting up for the school board election this year. And the names on there will be Michael Phelan, Corey L. Thomason, and Rachel E. Olson for those two positions. That will be on June 4th. And if you don't mind if I jump to the next one, um, along with, so we don't need any action on that, but along with that, now that we know that we do have an election, we have a combined election agreement. If you remember, uh, we do have to set that with Clay County, who we partner with, uh, with their auditor's office. Um, now that we know that we need it, we do spill over into Union County as well. So we need a uh, combined election agreement with Union County, and that is included in your packet. Any questions for Kevin? All right. Um, we can do one more here, which is approval of classified employee and teacher of the year. Yes. Uh, this time of the year, we're always proud to to uh, talk to our staff about the great things that have been happening in their building. Um, and then we seek nominations for uh, classified employee of the year and certified teacher of the year, teacher candidates. And those, those can come from parents, uh, they can come from students, uh, but many times they come from colleagues. Colleagues that recognize the things that another person in their building has done for kids or for the institution or for them personally. And so this year, um, the reason that we have approval of this is there is a monetary award that the district gives to our classified employee of the year and our district uh, folks of the year. Um, and then we also honor our district teacher of the year, the, the grand poobah of the whole entire district. So um, it's with great pleasure that, to read those nominations and to work with the admin team to look at, at the uh, people and what they're saying, because we think that we see these things often as administrators walking through the building, because you hear things, you see things, but it only verifies what you think you're seeing and hearing when you see it in print from somebody else, especially if a student does it or a parent does it, because they, they're doing it from outside the building. Um, but even when a colleague does it, it, it has a different lens and it really has a positive feel for our district. So with um, our classified employee of the year, um, each building had one. Nicole Van Sickler was our Austin representative. She's a para. Madeline Kennebec is a para from Jolly. She's a, cl a classified employee of the year for Jolly representation. 
Ashley Newman is a para from the middle school um, as our classified employee of the year there. And our classified employee of the year at the high school is Christina Jensen, who is our lead custodian. So congratulations to all of them. Their administrators had already shared this with them, so you're getting this secondhand. Tomorrow we'll send it all out to the district uh, so everybody sees and hears them all uh, from me particularly, but tonight you guys get to hear about it. Our Teacher of the Year candidates, uh, again, outstanding um, nomination class here as well. Megan Loneman, uh, special ed teacher at the uh, Austin Elementary. Caleb Wisman is our behavior room teacher at Jolly. Cole Feagan is a middle school teacher um, over there. And Trina Meredith is a high school teacher uh, teaching English ELA at the high school. Uh, once again, great group of folks. I'll give a lot to our, our district. And then our final uh, winner of our district teacher of the year is Cole Feagan from the middle school. So congratulations to all of them. Thank, uh, thank them when you see them for their work. And of course, uh, I wanna thank all the people who put nominations in, uh, whether um, they're a parent or a student or another colleague, because um, like I said, it's quite impressive to hear what people say about our staff. And so without them saying that, uh, we wouldn't have these awards. So uh, thank you for that. And I guess we'll need a motion to, to accept those for their financial um, rewards. Sure, I will take a motion for items L and M, which is the Clay County or the Union County Agreement, as well as the Classified and Teacher of the Years. So moved. <laughs> I'm going to take a first by Carol, second by Mark. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Post him sign. A motion passes. Last up for our new agenda is the discuss the food service management RFP. Uh, don't need any action on this tonight, but we did receive the deadline for our RFP for Food Service Management Company um, was last Thursday. We did receive one proposal from our current provider, and we will be evaluating that tomorrow with the Finance Committee at noon. And then uh, we will require a special board meeting, I believe, next Monday, uh, also at noon, uh, to uh, make some formal action on that. Thank you, Kevin, for putting that RFP out. Next up here, um, we have superintendent reports. Um, a few thank yous. I wanted to thank Mr. Kocher, our business manager, for helping uh, present at a public administration class at USD. Um, we were asked to come in and talk about uh, success, successful passing of school bonds or of a bond to a group of public administration students. It was a fun, fun thing to talk to those folks about. So. Thanks to Mr. Kocher for his help with that. Uh, thanks to Frank and Tommy from Houseman Construction for staying after last week, to, or actually it's been a couple weeks now, uh, then when we did our staff tours of the elementary building, we got to break into groups and those guys stayed after hours to make sure we could accomplish that. Appreciate that from them. I want to thank Ms. Bilberg and Mrs. Dibley for presenting at the VCD, VCDC banquet last week um, and sharing the details of our represent ed. Um, project and for showcasing the Grand Champion project. It was a lot of people uh, thought that added a neat little uh, twist to the VCDC banquet. They have our kids and our teachers there from our project. So thank them. Uh, Mr. Kocher and I uh, held our quarterly coffee and conversation event. Um, this is something that we've begun after listening to our um, uh, strategic plans. And so we did. Uh, a talk last week where we updated staff on Senate Bill 127 implications. We also talked about the new elementary school updates and plans for the last two days of school. So uh, I think that was a thing uh, that was well received and uh, we're going to try to find something quarterly to continue to try to talk about with our staff and, and um, achieve one of those goals. Um, once again, proud to announce that Lunchtime Solutions, um, Rochelle, our director, and of course her entire lunch team once again, got the Golden Turnip Award. Uh, for those who followed us for a while, I think this is their third golden and at least one bronze, or maybe two goldens and a bronze. I believe this is the third gold in a row, and it is the only South Dakota community to receive a gold in that entire span, I believe. So. Yeah. So goes to show you uh, what a partner we have in, edu in our lunch program. And it mainly derives off of the summer food program and the things that they do to promote and encourage participation there. But of course, it spills over to our breakfast and lunch program uh, as well. Um, 
I, I just had mentioned a little bit ago about our district employee of the year uh, and teacher employees of the year. I failed to mention that we will have a, a celebration for those folks in person with plaques and uh, hors d'oeuvres and things at the end of the year on our, our May 15th end of year celebration. So we look forward to that. And of course, just want a quick reminder that we, you know, we've had a tremendous year in the district uh, with lots of things happening. We've had fine arts champions, we've had ceramics champions, oratory, sports, um, we've had uh, a show choir win invitationals, all of those things uh, between sports and fine arts. We've had a tremendous year there. Um, we'll continue to uh, try to promote those and let those people shine and continue to provide those great opportunities for kids um, into the future here. Uh, and finally, I forgot to mention earlier, one of the things that we're hoping to do with our new building project as well is hold an open house at Austin and Jolly. Right now it's planned for the first week of May. Uh, Mrs. Ms. Parsons and Mr. Jacobs are trying to fine tune a date where those folks who might be interested in seeing those buildings as they're starting to be packed up and, and change in look will uh, get an opportunity to walk through and see them some more before, before they change hands. So. That's all I had. Just laugh at the pictures here. I think that this one right here, our glow in the dark, it was a color glow party that Mr. Jacobs had. I know that the kids had a good time. I think can't remember what reward they got for doing that, but that was a fun. I'm not sure if that was a reading incentive. Was Do you it know reading? Mr. Jacobs? Uh, oh, PBIS incentives. Okay. I said strict instructions. Go find a white T-shirt. I thought they were going to be like coloring and, things, <laughs> but really just so they glowed. Right. My, my daughters are very excited about it, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Great. Won't work well with all that clear story in the new school. We might have to come up with a, a, room, a dark room. But excellent. Um, now we'll move on to any school board reports for anybody. Any committee work? I know Mark and I have been busy with negotiations. We have another one here tomorrow. So continuing with that. So like finance has got a meeting tomorrow yep, as well. Finance tomorrow we'll have. Okay. Good. Any other updates? Booster Club has their Hall of Fame coming up on the 20th, where every event in Vermilion is happening that day. <laughs> um, and I believe Mr. Jacobs is doing a color run that day, too, to raise money for the playground equipment. Yep. I believe the student council at Jolly yep. maybe is putting that student on. student council. So um, I think it's that morning as well. So great. Good. Also, food service met, and um, some, some of our board members had the opportunity to eat with some kids and hear some things about the lunch program, and, and uh, it went well. I know the Boys and Girls Club is um, gearing up for their open enrollment, so I think it's April 15th um, that folks can start to sign up for the summer programming. So, All right, anything else? No? We'll move on then to financial reports. Kevin. Uh, included in your packet again this month here. Don't really have anything to highlight, but would entertain any questions if you've got them. Any questions for Kevin? Not. I would take a motion to approve. No move. First by Mark. Second. Second by Jacob. All those in favor say aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion passes. Any future agenda items? All right. Um, we do um, have a special meeting, as Kevin noted, which will be next Monday, April 15th, where we're going to discuss um, food service. And then otherwise, our May 13th is coming up, and then followed by June 10th meeting. We are in need of executive session for South Dakota Codified Law 1-25-2-4. So I would take a motion to get us into executive session. So move. First by yeah. Jacob and second by Mark. All in favor say aye. 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 Same. Same sign, motion passes. We are now in executive session.